Welcome to Digging History. We're your hosts, James McCormick and Corbett Perkins, just two veterans out digging our way into history and using our love for history as a part of our therapy as we navigate life after the Army. This show is all about bringing together veterans' history and the love of relic hunting to tell the story of those who served long ago. This show will tell the history of America and locate those precious artifacts and properly display and preserve them for the sake of history. We bring together technology, including metal detectors, maps, and even drone technology needed to locate, film, and document these discoveries, allowing all citizens to see, and in some cases, touch items that are in many cases older than the state of West Virginia. The veterans we work with on these projects will have an opportunity to tell their own story and in the course of these expeditions, find some therapeutic value of the experience and fellowship that these great adventures provide. Today our show will focus on three locations we have dug over the last 30 days. They are Northern Virginia, Hurricane, West Virginia, Barbersville, West Virginia, and all three sites turned up with some pretty cool artifacts. So sit back and enjoy this episode of Digging History. We're out here trying to show the therapeutic value of, of digging. Okay, nobody gets paid here. Nobody on a payroll. We pay our own transportation costs. Now, we've been very fortunate to work with some wonderful folks from First Texas. Uh, and and they've been very good to us, and I'm considering becoming a dealer uh, to start selling some of their product, because I really believe in it. I do, I really believe in, in First Texas. Uh, unsure. Okay, so First Texas makes the fisher, makes the bounty hunter. And guys and gals, hey look, you get your kids a little bounty hunter, you know, all those little kids bounty hunters, it's not gonna cost you a lot of money to do that. But man, you're gonna make memories. My daughter found a Civil War button and, and Corbett's daughter found a bullet and, and his son videotapes with us. He's found something that he likes to do. So, you know, hi, sorry for the wind folks. I can't control it. But God's gave us a beautiful day, so we'll be back to share some more of this digging with you. Let me dig this out first. This might be something really cool that I really don't want y'all to miss. Maybe. Maybe not. And again, it could not be. We don't know. Oh, I think it's a bullet. See that? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it's a bullet. I think that's a, oh, wait a minute. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a sinker. What in the heck, there's a creek over here. So I guess some kid, but well, you want to talk about a sinker. <laughs> so probably somebody was dragging along and that sinker was so heavy and they dropped it on the ground hey there's a piece of lead that's gonna come out of here so anyways that's what happens so keep watching us on digging history folks we love making these videos we do it because we love it and we love the therapeutic value of it and we love being outdoors and we love being able to teach people something and to encourage your heart and your mind to keep going another day. Keep going, folks. I have found a shell, an artillery shell. So it is definitely 
Civil War. And if you look down there, it is, it looks like an early model, maybe a parrot shell. It's definitely a shell though. Oh, oh. It's even still got the fuse in it. Seems like uh, I'm gonna have to clean it up. Oh, man, it's got a lot of rust on it. It is old, definitely, definitely early for, uh, goodness gracious. All right, well, there you have it. The first artillery shell found on the first day of January, 2020. And you saw it here on Digging History. And here we go on a dig in an undisclosed location. <laughs> but you can tell that it's raining, snowing, sleeting, all the above. All right, that's a halfway decent signal and move some of these leaves out of the way we'll see what we got okay we got something right here let's see what it is I'm highly suspect that it's probably junk of some sort, but when you're in a place that's full of, ah, here we go. Okay, folks. Yeah, so I got Corbett coming over here, but I found a J hook. Uh, a J hook is part of a uniform. Oh, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of little uniform pieces, as you can see, in this area right Why here. I hit this, uh, the trench. I would. I'd hit that area right up there. But this is, uh, this is where it's at. All right, we're going to move on over here. Yeah. Might find a lot of junk before we start finding. Ah, oh, there's something there. What is it? It's right on top. Oh, okay. Okay. This could be something. Um, this might be part of a, uh, a case or something. I don't know. We'll have to check it out later. What you got over at Perkins? dig right here Perkins is is using his new mine lab and me I'm sticking to old reliable Fisher F75 let's see what is what has turned up ah, check it out folks all right There we go. <laughs> Pop tab. All right, let's get on out of this junk area. Start working our way down this way. There's a lot of junk here. Um, I 
That's a pretty good little signal. I move the leaves out of the way. Okay, that is a good signal, giving me about an 80. So I'm gonna dig it. I uh, don't know what it is. Could be a bullet, could be a button. You know, it could be a coin, I don't know. A lot of people walk these trails. There we go. What do we got here? All right, let's see. There it is, whatever it is. It's just below the surface and it feels like, I thought it was a bullet, but it's not. Huh. or something here okay what is it uh, a can so we found one possible artifact and it's snowing but this has been kind of cool already so let's just get on over here and look that's all you can do I may want to turn my sensitivity up just a little bit and turn that down just a little bit. So I'm going to turn my sensitivity up to an 89. We got snow, we got leaves. You know, you got a lot of stuff on the ground here. And I don't want to miss anything. Iron. Little squeaker. And we'll move this stuff and see what we got. I've had luck doing that. Usually when it gives you that little signal like that. You know, I found a lot of things in this area. Um, as you can tell, it's close to a road. Um, as you can hear all the traffic. And it's snowing. So in these uh, adverse weather conditions, you're out here digging you still have to be very alert uh, for dehydration. Believe it or not, you can dehydrate out here. If it's snowing, if it's raining. So don't just think because it's cold, you don't need uh, Okay, that's a good signal. That sounds like a bullet, possibly. Okay, let's dig it up and see. Let's dig it, dig it up and see. Let's dig it up and see. I'll take an application for pirates. There's something here. There's something here that's actually probably kind of good, I think. I don't know, I could be wrong. Yeah. 
There it is. Oh, it's a button. Damn you. <laughs> it's a well, it's not a real but it's not a good button, but it's a button. <sighs> no, 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 it's not a button. It's it's a piece off of a uh, off of one of those um um it's it's an eyelet off of one of those tar um you know where they had the raincoat the rain uh, ponchos uh it's off canvas yeah that come up as brass what's your number 30 35 to 36. yeah i thought for sure it was a button but, but it kind of sort of is it kind of sort of is that's all right that's a cool little find that's a cool find all right and like we always right. say, you can't find it sitting on the couch. You can't find it sitting on the couch, <laughs> talking trash on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. That's Get it. off the couch. <laughs> you want to catch the diabetes. <laughs> I got rid of my diabetes. <laughs> okay, folks, James McCormick here with Digging History. And uh, as you can tell, it's cold down here. But I'm searching in a spot here in Roan County and I think I found something and I want to show it to you I'm not sure what it is but it looks like an old buckle um, I am really not sure exactly what that is but it may be off of a strap or something but it's very um, it's very old. I'll have to clean it up to see if there's any markings on it. I don't see any markings on it yet But I'll clean it up and I'll let you know so if anybody knows what that is take a look at it and let me know And again, I'm out here with my Fisher f75 tools of the trade making sure that I'm dressed for the cold You can probably even see the snow spitting around me uh, Make sure that you you bring extra clothing as well water You still want to drink water and all those things that you have to do and uh, um, just make sure you're prepared all the time and someone knows where you are. So keep watching us on Digging History and I'll let you know what this is later. But it looks cool. Take care. Have you ever had a day where you've dug so many three ringer Civil War bullets that your pants are starting to fall down because the pockets are so heavy? I'm having that kind of day. All right, here we are doing the reveal for Digging History and uh, honoring the sacrifice. So um, went to um, a spot that I, I have over across the river in uh, Pomeroy, Ohio, and found a lot of really cool stuff. Looks like about from the 1920s, a lot of it. The first really cool thing that I found, dug down about two foot and got another axe. I really like digging these axes up, and I, now I have uh, three really roached axes like this that I'm going to have to give to Corbett, and he's going to run it through his electrolysis machine, and then we're going to cover it with wax and and uh, and try to save it, preserve it. Uh, but this is what happens, you know. This is uh, this was a couple of feet down, so this is very well could be could date Civil War, if not even before the Civil War. So it is it is a cool cool axe head i found this thing i'm not even sure what it is uh, looks like there were some connections on the end here but it's um i dug it up and and actually to be honest with you now that i look at it it looks like uh it was part of a coil on a radio so probably from the 1920s you know this would have been what uh, the wire would have been around uh, but it's like a it's almost like a stone type material Found this really cool soap dish um, container here. This would have been, you know, probably from the 20s as well, 20s, 30s. Um, and that was really cool to find that. Found this a little lid. Now, this is probably the lid to a, uh, to a toothpick case. So, again, probably from the, the teens or the 20s. I found this live bullet. Now, this is a military-grade bullet, and you can tell by the writing that's on the bottom of this. So, um, very well, uh, I'll look at the markings and stuff, but it says uh, sick, 
It says 18 on the bottom of it, so I'm thinking that this is probably something from the World War I time period, and some soldier probably brought it home from the First World War. A fired 38 cartridge. Something, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Uh, but I dug it up and I wanted to show it to you. A modern bullet. Um, an electrical connector. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. Again, another piece. Um, as you can see, it had something here like a spring. So, I'm get, you know, this could have came from an old clock or an old, an old, old radio. Um, because I am finding some pieces there. Now this I got real, real um, excited about because of the writing, the U.S. stamp in the middle, okay? Uh, but this is um, um, a Tatham air rifle. It's part of, a, uh, of an air rifle. So found that up in the woods. Found this whenever I was digging. I dug up uh, a ceramic doll hand. So this would have been from the 1920s time period. Very well um, fits into that time period. A cool lock. So I like finding locks. And sometimes, you know, I get them cleaned off. And it looks like I'm going to be able to read this. We'll probably run this through the electrolysis. Um... But yeah, it's it's a nice, you know, 75 to 100-year-old lock. Um, very cool, very cool to find. Um, a couple of hinges, probably off of a music box, or again, it could be from this radio. I found a lot of this stuff in the same area um, that I found that. Not sure what that is. It just looked like uh, part of a rivet. Same thing with this. Found this, and again... Like I said, could have been part of an old radio system. So, um, this is kind of neat because it screws on to something. So, this is, uh, I see the thread that is in there and, um, and it's, you know, it's got it to work and be hand tightened. So, I'm not sure what this came off of, but if anybody knows, you know, there you go. You can take a look at it. Um, found this, I got real excited about it, and then I realized it's just a piece of barbed wire. <laughs> um, this is the end of, a uh, end of a belt. All in the same area. Found this kind of a, a cool bullet. Uh, it's not real old, but I was just kind of amazed at, um, at how it was made. And I'm sure that somebody probably hand poured that thing. Found the back of a pocket watch. As you can see, there's some really nice ornate design on the back of that thing. Um, probably from the 40s, maybe from the 30s. I'm not sure. Uh, found a bell top. Found two bell tops. So, you know, this could have been from a phone, uh, an old door buzzer. Uh, not sure found this. This is a toothpaste container. It was all rolled up and when I unrolled it, I started looking, it says it said toothpaste and I'm trying to get um, the name of, uh, of the company. It says something company. So uh, I'm going to try to look that up and um, it may say Fayol Company. I'm not sure. Um, but I'll take a look at it and and uh, it's not too often you find an old toothpaste container. And I'm going to guess it's probably from the 20s. And uh, this little bottle. And I found this bottle as well. So nice markings on the bottom. Uh, not super old because you had the twist tops that went on the top. So this would have been probably uh, the 40s or even the 50s. But it's still kind of cool to find it. I uh, found this from a garter belt. And um, that was a cool find. And then I found this. This is some sort of a little plate. And I've got to clean this up. There's some writing on this. And I've got to be able to, uh, to read this. But I can't read it. Now this I found. And when you shake it, there's something in it. Okay, and it looks like there's a way to open this up. But, but I'm kind of 
perplexed because it's got this. So I'm just wondering if this is some sort of an old um, resistor from a radio. It could be. Um, I've tried to open this and I can't get it open. But if you shake it, you can hear it. Now, I'm, I found something really cool here. And, uh, and I know people are going to uh, flip their lid whenever they find out what this is. So check it out. So I found this all. It was all twisted up and it's down in a hole. And it says on there on the top, it says three Merry Widows, one dollar. And it says select, selected, tested. That, my friends, I looked up, is uh, from the 1920s. And it is a, sorry about that, that's my dog. It is a it is a condom container. So there were three condoms in this thing um, from the 1920s. And you know, obviously there were none in there now. So, uh, <laughs> so back in the day, you know, this was, uh, this was how you would go and you'd buy your condoms back in the day. So, and they came in a little tin like this. And, uh, and there it is. So anyways, keep watching us on Digging History. Remember, folks, you can't find any of this stuff sitting on the couch. Or lollygagging. Or lollygagging. Get up and get to digging, and I'm going to take my dog outside. God bless, and have a good evening. Thank you for watching Digging History. We want to send down a special thank you to the West Virginia Library Commission for their support and access to books and historical art articles that help us locate and bring history alive. Remember that some of the greatest adventures is just a short trip to your local library, and it's a tremendous resource that's free for us to use. We also want to thank the West Virginia Library Television Network and Beth Garrigal, our producer, who donates her time and energy to this project. In addition, we wish to thank Fisher Research Labs for providing us technical and material support to make this show a success. I just want to give a big shout out and a thank you to John Burgess at DetectorsWarehouse.com. Uh, we'll put a thing on the Facebook channel or Facebook page. And I like to thank all my brothers and sisters, veterans out there that um, gave the ultimate sacrifice and the ones who gave some sacrifice to this great country. So folks, have an awesome day. And remember that a day digging history beats a day on the couch. So get to digging. <laughs>